Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. If you guys are into filmmaking or photography or any sort of gadgets when it comes to filmmaking, I think that's the best way I can put it. If you're into anything like that, that's what this channel is based upon. So if you are, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. You won't be mad. So in a previous video, I mentioned to be more specific of what's in my camera bag 2020. If you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. It's on my page. If you guys seen that video, know that I mentioned that I did make the big switch from Canon to Sony. And I did this for a couple reasons. The decision was hard. Those of you who switch from camera system to camera system might not know or might not have to deal with it. But for me, it was more of a learning curve because before I made the switch, you know, Sony is notorious for their menu system. From a Canon user, you know, Canon's menu system is very user friendly and Sony's is not. Um, they have a million info pages that you, it's a gift and a curse because you can really do whatever you want when they have full control. But coming from Canon, it can be a little maze in a way. So I'm not going to make this video too long and talk your ear off. I'm just gonna explain to you the reason why I switched from Canon to Sony, but more specifically why I chose the a7 III over the EOS R. Now, when it comes to bang for your buck, I think that's where Sony really shines. And if you look at the EOS R versus the a7 III, it's a complete home run for Sony. But I wasn't necessarily looking at that. I was just looking at the pros and cons of each camera and the Sony a7 III, they just took it home, hands down, no question. For what I needed, it checked all boxes. Now, one thing that I was stuck over was the flip screen. I am a YouTuber and I need that flip screen. That's why I purchased that Sony a6400 while I bought the a7 III, just to have something dedicated for YouTube that I can see myself, that I can frame my shot, get it, put the camera away and go about my day. What I had to do was list out the options. So the main reasons why I bought this a7 III over the EOS R was one, there was no crop in 4K. So you're getting the native 4K full frame. Awesome, it's amazing. You can't really tell the difference unless you're on a crop sensor camera and you switch to full frame, you see the difference. You know, not only does it give you a wider field of view, but it also gives you a more shallow depth of field. So it's amazing. Secondly was the slow motion. Now I'm used to 60 frames per second. And honestly, once you go 120p, you don't go back. It's over. You can't use 60 frames per second no more. Just 120 just gives you such a cinematic video. Blows 60 frames per second out the water. And you wouldn't even notice this until you shot on a camera that gave you actual slow motion. The next one would probably have to be one of the biggest ones. Now I do have a gimbal, but I don't like using gimbals. I have the WeBuild S. I did a review on it. I'll link it at the end of this video. Gimbals are nice. I love them. They're cool. They're fun to play with. They're amazing if you're working on a short film and you need something that's handheld, that's small and can get the job done in and out. Gimbals are amazing for that but if you just want something run and gun which we're doing you know if you want to make a if you want to make good quick content for me it was more i need a run and gun style setup and i need an in-body image stabilization now the eos r has this too but it's nothing compared to the a7-3's image stabilization it's just better in every way from the test i seen and the reviews that i seen it's better in every way so I went with it. Moving on is the log profiles. And I know that the EOS R does give you C log, but a7 III gives you a lot more flavors of C log. You know, you have S log two, S log three, uh, hyper, hyper log gamma. Forgive me if I'm saying the name wrong. Again, I'm just switching. Like I switched like maybe a week or two ago. So I'm new here and I'm still learning everything when it comes to Sony. That's definitely a game changer, you know, having all these logs and having, you know, all these picture profiles that you can set up and you can shoot at whatever log that you want and you have many options to choose from. So if I was to go with the EOS R, I would have to buy an adapter for the lens that I did have. Now, don't get me wrong, this is no big deal, but if I was gonna get the R, I wanted the R glass. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but if I was gonna get the R, I was looking at the 15 to 35 2.8, and God, that lens is, 
It's a beast. It's sharp from what I've seen. So if I was going to go with the EOS R, I would have went with that. And if you put those two together, it comes at about 4100 somewhere around that. And for that price, you know, I just, I couldn't justify it enough. You know, they, it's, it's like, you know, somebody told me this and, and it actually fits the bill so good. They said that the EOS R is just a crop version of the 90D. And after doing some research, it really is. It has almost all of the same features because it is a crop sensor camera and it gives you 24 frames per second 4K. And with the EOS R, that's basically what you're getting is 4K on a crop sensor body because it gives you that 1.7 times crop, I believe it is. Now, last but not least, we are gonna talk about the low light capabilities. And this has a lot to do with the running gun situation that I was telling you about. This camera is built for the hybrid shooter. Like if you wanna take amazing pictures and amazing videos, the a7 III is the way to go. Don't get me wrong, don't go to war in the comments saying, you know, Canon, this and their color science. Yes, I, I love Canon. You know, I was with Canon for a long time, but I just feel like Sony just gives you a lot more for your money. That's just my opinion. But the low light capabilities are amazing if you have a fast lens paired with you know the low light capabilities of the a7 III it's quite amazing what it can do and that's another area where sony really shines at is the low light performance who knows this could be temporary right now i'm really enjoying the a7 III and the 6400 i know a lot of people complain about the 100 megabytes per second and 4k you know it's not that big of a deal you know you don't really see that much quality if you know what to do in color grading you'll be all right and that's with any camera really you know if you're a good filmmaker and a good color grader it doesn't matter what camera you have if you expose right and compose right and know what you're doing in color grading or whatever video editing app you're using your image will look great i wasn't expecting to switch from canon to sony to be a better filmmaker because i know that your camera will only take you as far as your capabilities so if you know your camera in and out, you could do a lot with that. But this is my little rant or my little story. You guys let me know what you think. Let me know if I should have went with the EOS R over the a7 III, or let me know if I made a good purchase. Either way, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what camera you guys are rocking with in 2020. But I believe that's it. So until next time, be safe, wash your hands, but I'm out. Whew.